Okay, welcome back to Physics 3740 at the University of Utah. Uh, today we're going to talk about the uh, set, we're going to continue talking about a central force potential, uh, which we began last time, but we're going to we're going to talk in particular about the angular solutions, uh, which we'll see are related to uh, things like angular momentum, quantization of angular momentum. Okay, so uh, let me just sort of remind you where we are. We found um, in the last lecture that uh, when we have a central force, that is a force whose magnitude and um, uh, depends only on the distance uh, of a particular particle or of, uh, of, a, uh, of a point from a fixed origin, and that the force, the direction of the force is uh, lies along the line from uh, that separates the origin from that position or that particle. Okay. And we found that under these conditions, um, we can um, use polar coordinates, spherical polar coordinates, and we can uh, separate variables. And, and in particular, we can find the solutions. The we can uh, have a radial equation which depends only on the distance between the origin and the, the point R. And uh, so we, we, if we write the wave function, which is a function of r, theta, and phi, oops, and um, uh, as a product of, of r of r and, uh, and y, which is a function of theta and phi, then we can write the uh, uh, Schrodinger equation like this. Okay, so we have these two uh, different uh, equations, one of them which only involves r, and we call that the radial equation, one of them which involves theta and phi, which we call the angular equation. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the angular equation. We're going to leave the radial equation until next time because um, we can see we see that there's all, we already learned a lot by just uh, looking at the angular equation. And in fact, the angular equation is completely general for a central force potential because it uh, the 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 the, um, the, the uh, form of the the actual form of the potential u of r actually doesn't appear in the angular equation. It only appears in the radial equation, and so. Um, what we'll talk about today is completely general for any potential that can be described by, uh, as a central force, that describes a central force. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So I fixed I fixed this uh, this I had before r phi phi. Now I fixed that I uh, fixed that so I made it r theta phi. <clears throat> so, and it's important to realize also where we're going with this. We're we're basically leading up to the hydrogen atom, um, for which the potential potential energy is equal to minus e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r, where e is the fundamental charge uh, on an electron, and r is the distance between the electron in an atom, the, in the hydrogen atom and the positively charged nucleus. Okay, And so this is, this is where we're going with that, and you can see that it is indeed a central force. This uh, force is defined, in, in a conservative potential, the force is defined as the derivative, the spatial derivative of the potential minus the spatial derivative of the potential, and so we see this gives us the the um, uh, the standard or the uh, familiar uh, Coulomb force uh, minus e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared. Okay, so that's kind of where we're going. But again, today's uh, discussion that that is about the angular equation will uh, will be completely general for any central force potential, not just the um, the uh, Coulomb potential. Okay, so let's let's start. Let's talk about the angular equation. Um, this uh, equation here uh, can be rewritten um, slightly differently by uh, as as I've done right here. Okay, and uh, just like we always do, since this is a function of two variables, theta and phi, what we do is we 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 um, we try a solution that involves we basically try separation of variables. That is, we try to write um, y these y functions, which are a function of both theta and phi, in terms of two uh, independent functions, uh, big theta of theta, capital theta of theta. That's this symbol here. Um, times capital phi of phi, and um, and then we basically see how far that gets us, and and what we learn, and whether we can actually, in, in fact, solve that. So what we do is we plug this uh, expression for y into the angular equation, and we see where it goes. 